Welcome to the Benefits of Knowledge podcast with Lauren Curry of Curry Financial Group Limited. In this podcast, we are focused on helping businesses set up and manage their group benefit plan to protect and assist their most valuable assets. Join us on this journey where Lauren explores ways to help you develop effective and cost-efficient strategies for your business. Now on to the show. Hello and welcome to the Benefits of Knowledge with Lauren Curry. Lauren, how are you today? Doing great, Eric. How are you today? I am doing great as well. Um, I'm so pleased that you keep bringing me back to be a part of this. You've got another guest today, correct? We sure do. Very excited. Um, This is uh, a guest and a topic that I've been wanting to do since we started, which was This is uh, episode 24, actually the end of our first season. So I'm really glad to get Melanie LeBlanc in to talk with us. Yeah, that's right. You have Melanie LeBlanc in, and she joins us from LifeWorks, which is previously known as Morneau Chappelle, a global leader in total well-being. Melanie has been with them for the past 10 years, and initially as a customer success manager, and now as a director in business development. Uh, I know that Melanie loves to talk about all as aspects of EAP and well-being, and Melanie's here to share more on LifeWorks Employee Assistance Program and well-being platform. So, Lauren, thank you so much for bringing her in. Melanie, I'm so glad you're on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm very excited. Apparently saving best for last. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Lauren, I'm, I'm here to learn all about Melanie, and I know that you're going to run the interview, so take it away. Okay, thanks very much, Eric. Uh, welcome, Melanie. Again, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to, to come on here and, and share your thoughts with our audience. Yeah, like I said, really happy to be here. So thank you for the opportunity. Okay, that's great. Um, so let's, you know what, let's jump right in. So EAP, Employee Assistance Program, for anybody that's not familiar with that, uh, that term. I know people, in my opinion, keep thinking of this just as a counseling service. So can you maybe give us an outline of what an EAP actually entails? Yeah, great, great first question. So absolutely EAP is more than just counseling. A lot of people know us for that, but it goes well beyond that. Wellness for us is really not a one size fits all solution. So a good EAP, when we look at it, needs to take something that's more holistic or proactive, so less reactionary to a crisis um, and more personalized for an employee's well-being. So that's not just looking at emotional or mental well-being, but also looking at an individual's financial, social, or physical health. So when we create a more robust well-being ecosystem, we definitely can help more individuals, regardless of where they fall in the continuum of care. So not just those in crisis, but other people who might be looking for something more proactive. Right. So that's uh, it, it really does involve many, many more employees this way, right? Because, again, the original idea, I think, was a counseling service. So people thought, oh, well, only if I need counseling. So now we can really involve everybody that works at, the, uh, at our, our clients. Right. So, so you have counseling. So let's start with that one. So what type of counseling do you have? Yeah, absolutely. So here at LifeWorks, we provide short term solution focused counseling, meaning we're here to address and resolve short term issues. And the great thing with LifeWorks is we provide access to many modalities. So whether that's in person or face to face, virtual, telephonic, online chat, e-counseling, you name it, it's there. And of course, 24-7, 365 days a year. Right, so everybody can can contact uh, people how they're comfortable, I guess is probably the most important part of that. Some people don't like face-to-face, some people don't like talking on the telephone. You've, you've got every possible way. Absolutely, providing different avenues for care depending on what an individual needs. So their learning style, their lifestyle, or like you said, they're just individual preferences. Right, okay. So work-life consultations. So you've got professional services and advice to help with all of life's challenges. So what, you know, you wanna just cover off kind of all those pieces for us? Yeah, absolutely. So sometimes individuals, maybe they're not going through an issue where they need to see a counselor, but they're definitely having something happen in their life where they could benefit from professional advice or some additional coaching. So things like free legal consultations and speaking with a lawyer, financial advice, depending on what stage of the financial game they're 
at our nutrition counseling program for the past two years has been really popular with all that's going on. And of course, things like parenting and child care support or on the flip side, elder care and caregiving resources. So you can see there's really support for work, health, life and kind of everything in between, even if it's not just counseling. Right. That's that's great. I think a lot of people will be surprised, you know, that they can get help with all these different things. Uh, you know, nutrition, like elder care, who, who would really think of that, right, if, if yeah. we don't get that information out to them. So uh, our last podcast, I know we were, we were talking about uh, some of the pressure on the managers in, in different organizations as we go through the changes with COVID and stuff. Um, you have specific things for management? Yeah, absolutely. So we know managers are under a lot of stress and it definitely shows up in their mental health scores. So they need specialized services. So we offer consultations that connect them with specialists and organizational behavior to really help support them with employee issues or workplace concerns. So something unique that they would face that maybe a regular employee might not. Right. And again, going back to our last um, uh, podcast, you know, we were talking about how with people working, you know, from their homes and stuff like that, it's very hard on managers to try and make sure they contact those people. And at the same time, when they are talking to them to try and pick up on how are they doing, right? Um, So I'm sure there's, there's things in here to help them with that stuff. Absolutely. To add to that, actually, managers are having a lot of difficult conversations, like you said. And I don't know about you, but I haven't been, you know, I didn't wake up one day knowing how to have those conversations. I needed coaching through that. So that's really what we're designed to do is help them with some of those more difficult situations they might be in that they don't, you know, intuitively know how to handle. Okay, that's great that uh, I know those managers really need that support. And uh, I think that'd be a very important part of this for our, uh, for our clients. So what about online support? Yeah, so for us, it's really important to remove barriers for access and make a program easy to use. And so for some people, like you said, it might not be calling in, it could be accessing us online or through our free mobile app. Um, so for us, the LifeWorks Wellbeing platform has a lot of different features. So that includes a news feed, a perks program, four health assessments, 24-7 chat access, and of course, a robust EAP library of well-being content. Wow, that was a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I do it quite a bit. Yeah, so um, the idea of having the app, because I have seen the app, and uh, to me, that is a really important piece of your program that I don't think everybody really has, or certainly not to the extent that you have. We try and incorporate a lot of different features, again, coming back to those four pillars of well being, whether that's emotional and mental health, financial, social, or physical. So, bringing in things like a recognition program for the social piece, or a telemedicine solution for physical health, um, a perks program for financial. That's why you're going to see so much on our platform that's really unique to LifeWorks. Yes, I think, uh, I think any of our, uh, our clients or our listeners would be, you know, well served if they were able to, you know, see and, and check out the app that LifeWork does offer. And, uh, you know, it's, it's second to none in the industry, in my opinion. Uh, so one of the other things that I've found in the EAP programs we have, Melanie, in place is just people being aware of it and actually using it. It's the utilization that I think is the biggest issue that I see with the programs. Yeah, I think that a lot of organizations struggle with that. So for us, it's not just enough to launch the program and walk away, to tick the box and say you have a program. You really need to have continuous visibility or even better strategic planning. So if we can find ways to integrate EAP promotion into organizations, programs or wellness strategies, we create more awareness. Or if we use popular events throughout the year to highlight EAP, even better. So things like holiday stress, you know, whether it's Christmas time or New Year's, it can be really stressful for some. So plug in EAP. Right. That's, uh, yeah, I think that's what's been missing in the programs that we've had is, uh, you know, people put up the poster, they send out a pamphlet to say, hey, we have this stuff, but then there's, there's not a follow up. Uh, so I like the idea of the, the holidays and, and the different things 
uh, that you mentioned. So um, February is uh, a big time for people um, trying to pay off their visas after Christmas. Uh, have you got some ideas on that? Yeah, absolutely. February is actually one of the busier months for us in terms of call volume. And I think, again, it's January's New Year's resolutions. We're doing great. We're sticking to our goals. And probably February, it's starting to trickle down. And we're looking for more support. So a lot of people do reach out for financial consultations. So again, not just counseling, but other supports or going onto our Perks platform to save money on everyday pieces. That's a really great way of highlighting February, which is typically a quiet month when it comes to events. Right. So do you feel that your platform with the many ways of, of connecting, does it re, um, reduce the you know stigma around using your program? I might be a little biased, but obviously I think so. And I think it comes back to incorporating things that extend beyond just mental health supports. So I might not be ready to speak to a counselor or do a virtual care program online, but I'm going on to the LifeWorks platform to read a corporate communication or access a virtual fitness program. I'm coming in for different reasons, which makes it easier for me to use the platform. But then this way, if something happens, I actually know where to go. I'm already familiar with LifeWorks. I already know that that program's in place to support me. Now I just have to prov provide, you know, different access to the supports I might be interested in. Very good. So the uh, the news feed you have on the platform, because I, I think in my mind, that might be a key way to keep people engaged on a more regular basis. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of companies out there struggle with communication. It's that fine line between making sure my employees know what's going on and not bombarding them constantly with information. And so with the LifeWorks newsfeed, companies actually can use it as a corporate communication tool. They can post different resources there, not just EAP related, but of their other wellness initiatives or awards or town hall recordings. But it's a great way of promoting different aspects of the EAP as well. And it's right there. You can send push or email notifications so you know your employees are seeing the updates you're providing. And I think in today's world, at least in my world, uh, the number of emails that I get. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, people are buried in their inbox. And if you try and send them everything by email, I, I just doesn't get read. But if you're able to put that news uh, feed or whatever you want to call it uh, on your platform, then at people's, you know, their leisure, they have time and know that they can go in there and read that, you know, when they have the time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we used it before and the, the days that we were actually commuting to the office, I'd get onto the platform and just do a quick scan. I might not be ready to look at my emails in the morning, but definitely looking at the news feed. Now it just happens probably when I'm out walking my dog. That's typically when I'm on my phone, just scrolling through to see what's new. All right. Um, yeah, I, again, I really hope people will, uh, get an opportunity to take a look at this. I, I can't encourage them enough. Um, to me, the, this app is the, the best part of this whole thing. So, or, or it makes it easiest for everyone. So let's go into who is EAP good for? Yeah, I mean, great question. So to me, I look at it in two lenses, from a company perspective and then for the end user as well. So for a company, EAP is really designed to support all types of organizations. In fact, the large majority of organizations already have some sort of EAP in place. Now, regardless of size, industry, or location, we're actually really here to support all organizations with their employees' well-being. Yeah, the, uh, I think a lot of the group plans that we have have some really basic stuff in there, and so I... Again, I encourage the listeners to, you know, look beyond the maybe the the basics that are included in your program and, and take a look at other things that are available in the market, such as uh, LifeWorks. What about the uh, end user perspective? So, again, it's really designed to support all individuals. Like we said at the very beginning, we need to move away from thinking that EAP is 
only there for people needing mental health support or those seeking counseling or in crisis. We are indeed there for that, but participants could be also reaching out at different stages. Some might be just exploring options or wanting to take a more preventative approach to their wellness and maintaining the gains they've already made. And then others, of course, could indeed be reaching out for that just-in-time support. They're ready to take action, build some type of skill, and carry it forward. We need to support all individuals where they fall in that continuum of care, how and, of course, when they want it. Right, and that goes right back to all those ways you have to connect with them. So that's that's great. Um, we're all very aware of the pandemic, and uh, maybe you could share your uh, ideas on how the pandemic has impacted EAPs. Yeah, I think it's you know changed over the past 20 months, but there's definitely some things that have consistently remained popular or we've seen. So some of the things to note are increased need for chat support. A lot of us are still at home. We might not have a door to close where we can take a private call. It can be difficult to reach out in that traditional telephonic way. So we've seen definitely a lot more people reach out through online chat support where there's that added level of privacy of nobody being able to overhear you. Other things we see are things like uh, popularity in our nutrition counseling. I think at the beginning of the pandemic, it's because people were at home with more meals to cook and mouths to feed. And I think now they're looking to make healthier decisions when it comes to a very expensive grocery bill. I don't know about for others, but for me, it seems like it's getting more expensive every time I go. There's no doubt about that. Um, I don't do much grocery shopping, but if my wife sends me to the store for something, it sure seems like uh, everything's a lot more expensive, uh, in, in my opinion. So, Yeah, some other things, too, that we've seen, um, of course, is that need for, like I said, that just-in-time support. So we're having a lot of individuals reach out, not just wanting to book a counseling session in the next couple of days, but they have time now, they're ready now, and they want to speak to somebody right away. We do provide 24-7 immediate access to counseling when there is a need, and a lot of individuals are looking for that support. So we've seen a huge surge in this type of resource required. Um, and so that has been something that has been very different that's specific to the pandemic. And that's probably driven by the fact that a lot of people, whether if, especially if they live alone, right, they're feeling isolated and, and lonely because they're they're missing out on that interaction with their uh, co-workers so i'm sure that's that's driving a lot of that so yeah. um the other thing i'd like you to just talk a little bit about is uh, the life works mental health index yeah so this is one report that we create on a monthly basis that tracks the mental health status of Canadians, US, Australian, and British employees. So every month we report on our findings and how it's changing because of COVID. So what we're seeing right now in our, our mental health score reports is the turnover or retention problems that a lot of companies are facing. So we found in September that 33% of Canadians report an increase in job stress compared to 2020, and that one in five are actually resigning from their jobs because of this increase in stress. Other things that we're finding are things like parents and managers, so that group that we really talked about before needing extra support, they're actually more than twice as likely than others to resign during the pandemic. So I know that that's what a lot of companies are, stress are facing right now. It's a huge concern for them, and they're finding ways that they need to get ahead of it. Which is exactly what all of the, the wonderful things LifeWorks is offering. Uh, hopefully that people will feel more supported. Yeah, we actually know that employees who report having employer support or well-being programs in place actually show better mental health scores in the long term. So that is something that is really impacting employees. When they feel cared for, they tend to have a better score. That, and that, to me, that just makes sense. Again, if you're at home, you don't have that same support as being at the office where, you, you, know, the, you know, your coworkers are around you, your manager's there, um, and it's easier for managers. So, okay, because we're moving on here in time, so I wanted to make sure I get, it to, I get to one of the things, I guess, that I get in feedback from my clients is 
what's the value of the EAP and why is it needed? Yeah, I think honestly, it starts with that acronym of E, right? Employees, people are the largest costs and investments companies typically make. So we know that employers really care about their people, not just you know from a financial perspective, but hopefully from an altruistic perspective as well. EAP, when in place, can really impact absenteeism and presenteeism issues and provide a better return on investment. Right, so uh, obviously absenteeism, people aren't at work, but that presenteeism, I think a lot of people don't realize the loss in uh, whether it's production or, or whatever you want to call it, where people are at work, but they've got so much on their mind. They're worrying about their kids. They're working about worrying about their elderly parents. Uh, we just lose so much productivity uh, due to those things. Yeah, we actually know that in the Canadian economy, we lose almost $50 billion per year to productivity losses. So when you take that number and you apply something like an EAP where we know it has an impact and it can increase productivity, we actually see on average an ROI of 569 for every dollar spent, which to me is just crazy. Um, you know, above and beyond that, a, typically, a typical counseling case yields cost savings between $2,000 and $3,500. So with numbers like that, you actually only need one out of a hundred employees to use the program to see a one-to-one -one return. I'm a numbers person, so to me, I always find that stuff very interesting, um, just what impact it can have. Yeah, I that those numbers actually shock me because, uh, you know, again, the utilization we see in the past, and again, I believe it's because it's not properly promoted, but even the low utilizations I've seen in some of our programs, um, they're, they're still, the employer is still saving money. So uh, I, I'm actually uh, surprised at how large those numbers are. And even too with reporting, at LifeWorks, we provide two different sets of reports. One for people calling in and initiating support, so that counseling or work-life consultations, and another one for the online platform. So that online platform, because it's a little bit more personalized and preventative, it gets more engagement. We have people reaching out and using the platform on a much more regular basis. So what we see in terms of platform engagement, you know, 65% within the first six months for a lot of organizations is very different from that traditional EAP utilization of maybe eight to 10%. Yes, 65 is a big number compared to what I, what I have seen in, uh, in a lot of our programs in the past. So that's, uh, that's great news. Um, I'm, I'm shocked that that number is that large as well. Yeah. So, um, so you're really tracking and measuring everything. So you report back to the employer exactly, you know, what usage is coming from the different parts. Exactly. And so above and beyond those two reports, one thing that LifeWorks can also provide to organizations looking to implement it is what we call our total well-being advanced analytics report. So this measures those four health assessments on physical, financial, social, and emotional well-being and really gives them a score on their employees' overall well-being. And for us, I always think back, I can't remember who quoted it, but it's something along the lines of, Often we don't count what we can't measure and we don't measure what truly counts. And so I think a lot of employers want to do good. They want to make sure that they put the right programs in place that support their employees, but they don't know where they're going to have the biggest impact or what's truly going to help them. So this report's really designed to give them much better insights into where their employees could need the most support. That's fantastic because that is going to answer a lot of the questions that I'm getting from the employers, uh, you know, whether it's the HR managers that we're dealing with or the business owners, you know, that we're all looking at, at the dollars and cents of what we're spending. But I think it's pretty clear here. And, and then this report is going to, you know, point out the fact that this is money well spent. And beyond the financial side, uh, you know what, it's really looking after your employees. And, you know, that's really what group benefits is all about is, you know, this is in place to look after them, 
you know, whether it's uh, on the health side, whether it's on the dental side, um, but the mental health and all the things we talked about today are just so, so important. So I thank you so much, Melanie, for sharing all of this information uh, with our listeners. And if anybody has questions, then uh, by all means, uh, everybody hopefully knows our phone number by now, but they can reach us at one 866 445 4424 or of course we're at currayfinancialgroup.com uh, so our email addresses and stuff like that are in there so Melanie I thank you very much for your time uh, you've shared a lot of information and uh, I'm sure this should uh, catch a lot of people's attention my pleasure thanks for having me again Lauren Melanie and Lauren, this was a great podcast. Uh, Melanie, obviously your heart is in the right place. Uh, you speak with such passion about the things that you guys are doing at LifeWorks. So thank you again for being on the show. And of course, Lauren, thank you for bringing her on the show. You always have great guests, man. Uh, well, we try to find the best, right? Absolutely. Uh, again, thank you, Lauren. And of course, our last thank you goes to you, listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Benefits of Knowledge podcast with Lauren Curry. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Lauren comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your colleagues. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Curry Financial Group, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Benefits of Knowledge podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available.